My name is Lee Hall and I am the preparator and lab manager for the Department of Vertebrate Paleontology at the Cleveland Museum of Natural History. And I'm Ashley Hall and I'm an educator at the museum. The research that we did is going to be in the book called Dinosaur Tracks, Next Steps, which is part of the IU Press series. We looked specifically at the feet and the trackways left by sauropods because there were some competing hypotheses or scientific questions out there that were attempting to explain why their feet had such a unique morphology. And the morphology that I'm referring to is the large or hypertrophied claws on the hind feet. The reason this is interesting is because throughout the progression and evolution of sauropod dinosaurs, their forelimbs gradually lost all the fingers and claws from the front leg except for digit one. In some cases, they even lost digit one. Whereas in the hind feet, the trend was to retain the large claws and to make them even bigger. But all the previous research had looked exclusively at the bones. These researchers had analyzed the toe bones and the foot bones and the claws, and they'd studied how the articulations between the different bones functioned. And nobody had actually looked at the actual trackways, the actual evidence that these animals left it really made sense to go into this other type of analysis to try and understand what was really happening. Because the nature of fossil footprints is that they are usually preserved because an animal was walking in soft mud. So for our research, we actually studied over 30 different tracks and we contacted researchers all over the world got photographs, got um, personal communications with people, and, and basically any information we could for this. And so after compiling all the data, we looked through every single track to see exactly what the dinosaurs were doing with their feet. Were they gripping? Were they slipping? Were they sliding? Were they doing nothing at all? And so to tie it all back together, if you are evolving these giant foot claws specifically for the purpose to avoid slipping and sliding in the mud. And if those foot claws are only useful when the foot is being flexed and the toes pulled downwards, you would expect to see that reflected in the tracks the dinosaurs left. But what we found instead was that in nearly every single track that we looked at, the toe claws were not pulled in under the foot, they were actually extended. So it seems that the opposite is true in the case of at least the substrate grip hypothesis. And that would make sense because sauropods lived all over the world. They weren't just living all the time in muddy substrate. So you wouldn't, it's not like a snowshoe hare that's in the snow, you know, most of the time. And they have these amazing feet to deal with snow. Sauropods were walking on hard ground and soft ground and muddy ground. Sauropod feet are really unique because there's nothing quite like them today in the modern world. And that makes it a little bit difficult to explain exactly what was happening when they would flex their feet. So what happened is when a sauropod would engage the muscles that flex those claws, the same muscles that pull your toes down into the ground or into the sand, sauropod claws would flex downwards. But they would also rotate, which is really bizarre. So these big claws would, they'd pull down and then they'd rotate over and fold across the front of the foot until they were overlapped sort of like shingles on the roof of a house. And what that did is formed one continuous blade-like surface across the front of the foot. So if you can think of a garden hoe, that is an analogous structure. That's pretty much the same thing we're looking at. It's, it's a built-in garden hoe on the front of the foot. But the feet also have a a network of scales and tubercles on them. So one of the neat things about looking at these fossil trackways was that sometimes there were skin impressions of the bottom of the sauropod foot. And what you could see were very large scales the size of quarters and, and poker chips uh, several, several centimeters across. And these scales and warty tubercles essentially were like a natural hiking tread in the skin of the animal. So the result of our study is pretty exciting because now we feel very confident in saying that sauropod claws had evolved their unique size and their unique shape not to prevent slipping and getting stuck in the mud but instead for some potentially really interesting behaviors. Those claws were being used for digging into the earth and we think they were using them to dig up nests. 
our study was important because we took one more question about these dinosaurs and looked at the evidence, looked at the fossil record, and what we found was you know, different than what a lot of people were thinking. So next time you see a dinosaur show or a toy or a picture, you're going to be looking at those claws um, because of you know, this study. So it's just one more um, question that we have an answer to right now.